Okay, now we continue with the second part, which is we need to explain the wave behavior of electron in electron microscope. Okay, so to okay, recap, so okay, we have learned in chapter ten, which is um particle wave particle duality. Okay, so what is mean by wave particle duality? Okay, so we have the electron as a particle can behave at a, as a wave at a certain circumstance. Okay, so that's why they panggil wave particle duality. Okay, so, so kita tengok electron. So this is our electron. Electron is a particle. And electron a particle because it has the punya particle properties which is it has momentum mass times velocity so particle ada mass then particle ada momentum okay so we prove that particle electron as a particle also can behave as a wave because it has a diffraction pattern okay macam mana kita nampak diffraction pattern as in the previous below uh, previous video kita tengok dia ada diffraction pattern in Davison and Germa experiment okay so from here kita dah, from here kita belajar the de Broglie wavelength so de Broglie wavelength which is lambda equals to h over p so lambda is the wave properties because it is a wavelength and p is the particle properties because it is a momentum Okay, so from lambda equals to HP, kita tahu juga lambda is equals to H over MV. And V here is the velocity. Okay, so another equation in chapter 10 yang kita dah belajar, which is kita baru belajar tadi, ialah lambda also equals to H over Z to MEV. So, ini ialah V besar. So, V besar ini, dia ialah voltage dia bukan velocity so you have to know the difference okay so mm, this is in 10.1 and 10.2 the first part okay so in 10.2 the second part kita nak belajar wave behavior of electron in electron microscope so electron microscope, microscope ni macam mana so this is the uh, keratan rentas Yes, in Malay, kereta rentas of electron microscope. So, dia terbahagi kepada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 part. Okay. So, this is the explanation in your notes. So, from this explanation, saya cuba untuk ringkaskan kepada this nota. Okay. So, we continue with the first one in your notes in page 5. Okay. A practical device that relies on the wave properties of electron is electron microscope. Maksudnya, electron microscope ini ialah antara device yang kita menggunakan wave properties of electron. Sebab apa kita macam belajar oh electron ada wave properties dekat mana kita gunakan di dalam electron microscope. Okay. So, the second point, dia kata, it is similar to optical compound microscope in many aspects. Dia lebih kurang macam optical microscope. In the electron microscope, electron are produced by the electron gun. So, dekat mana electron gun? So, we have here a hot filament. Dia ialah source of electron. And dekat sini, kita panggil dia sebagai electron gun. Pistol electron. Okay, kenapa dia pistol elektron? Sebab dia ialah sumber elektron tu terjadi. Kalau kamu tengok dekat sini, charge ni ialah negatif. Dan ini kita punya voltage kan, power supply negatif dan positif dekat sini. So, dia connected to the positive supply. So, dia ialah source of the electron. Okay, and it's, it's very high voltage. Okay, so maksudnya elektron akan keluar daripada this hot filament. Right, so this is the first part. Okay, so ini yang pertama. Electron akan keluar. Okay, then the electron are accelerated by voltage on the other of 10 to the power of 5 and have a wavelength on the order of 0 0.004 nanometer. Nanu, nanometer. 
Okey maksudnya elektron ini keluar dengan very high voltage. Maksudnya dia tembak dengan voltage yang sangat tinggi. So bila voltage yang sangat tinggi, berapakah voltage dia? The high voltage ialah 10 to the power of 5 volt. Okey, so from the equation lambda is equals to h over z 2 mev. So bila voltage kita tinggi, we know that lambda is inversely proportional with 1 over voltage. Bila voltage tinggi, lambda akan rendah. So our wavelength ialah 0.004 nanometer. Okay. So it's a very small wavelength. Okay. So elektron yang keluar daripada kita punya elektron kan ini nak pergi mana? So dia akan terkapai-kapai. So what will happen? Kalau kamu nampak dekat sini, it is connected to the positive plate. So this one, dia bercharge positif. So kalau kamu nampak dekat sini, ini ialah positif. So, elektron bercharge negatif, dia akan accelerate toward positive plate. Okay. So, elektron are deflected dekat nota kamu. Point yang kelima dia kata, electrons are deflected by the magnetic lens to form a parallel beam which then incident on the object. So, bila elektron itu dah pergi dekat positive plate, okay, dekat sini kita ada condensing lens. So, apakah kita punya condensing lens? This condensing lens we also call as a magnetic lens. Okay, magnetic lens ni apa? Magnetic lens ni dia ialah magnet. So, this is magnet. Kalau magnet, dan elektron yang ada dekat situ. So, elektron masuk dekat magnet. So, dalam magnet, dia akan ada magnetic field which is simbolnya ialah B. So, bila elektron pass through B, dia akan menghasilkan magnetic force. We have learned this in chapter 4. So, magnetic lens ini dia ialah current carrying conductor. So, dia ialah bukan, bukan so dia ialah current carrying coil of the wire. Okay. So, dalam CCC in chapter 4 kita belajar ada magnetic field. Bila ada magnetic field akan ada bila ada elektron, elektron yang lalu di dalam magnetic field akan menghasilkan magnetic force. Okay. So, this is the magnetic force. Okay, so elektron yang pass through here, so elektron tu pass through kita punya condensing lens, dia akan bergerak terus ke bawah. Okay, and hit our object. So yang saya highlight kat sini, so this is our object. Right. Okay, so nota kita point yang ke enam. The magnetic lens is actually magnetic field that exert force on the electrons to bring them to focus. So, the electric force yang menyebabkan kita punya elektron fokus dekat objek. The field are produced by carefully designed current carrying coil of wire. Okay. And point yang ke 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 dia kata, when the object is struck by the electrons more penetrate in some parts than in others depending on the thickness and density of the part. Okay. So, elektron ini akan bergerak ke bawah. So, elektron akan bergerak dekat sini. Dan elektron akan penetrate. So, what is mean by penetrate? Dia akan um, penetrate in Malay we call as tembus. Elektron yang tembus melalui objek akan menghasilkan image dekat sini. Okay. So, berapa banyak elektron yang boleh tembus is depends on the thickness of the object. So, biasanya objek yang kita gunakan mestilah nipis. Supaya lagi banyak elektron yang tembus, lagi jelaslah image kita dekat sini. So, bila elektron kita dah tembus, dia akan melalui objective, objective lens. So, apakah fungsi objective lens? So, dia objek. Dia menumpukan kita punya im, uh, objek dekat sini. So, that's why kita punya elektron akan terfokus. So, bila dia dah terfokus, dia akan melalui satu lagi projection lens. So, dia akan projectkan image kita. So, menghasilkan kita punya image dekat sini. So, image yang terhasil ini, dia ialah diffraction pattern of the object. Diffraction pattern of the object. So, objek kita dekat sini, dia akan menghasilkan image dekat bawah ini. So, elektron lalu dekat objek, lagi banyak elektron yang lalu, lagi, lagi banyak elektron yang tembus, lagi 
jelas lah image kita dekat sini. So, objektif ni dia akan objek kan, fokus kan. So, dia melalui projection lines, projection ni akan project. Dia akan pancarkan kita punya image. So, image akan terpancar on a fluorescent screen ataupun uh, film. Okay, so itu ialah how we use electron punya wave properties in electron microscope. Okay, so dekat nota kamu, it said here, it said here, okay, when the object is struck by the electron, more penetrate in some parts than in others, depending on the thickness and density of the pipe. Maksudnya, it depends on the density of kita punya object. The image is formed in a fluorescent screen. The image is brightest where most of electron has been transmitted. Maksudnya, lagi banyak elektron yang tembus dekat kita punya objek, lagi jelas kita punya image. Okay. So, there are two types of electron microscope. The first one ialah transmission electron microscope, which is this one. Dia ialah transmission electron microscope. The second one ialah scanning electron microscope. So, this one ialah scanning electron microscope. Kalau transmission dia produce two-dimensional, Kalau scanning, they produce three-dimensional. Okay. So, this is the uses of wave properties of the electron. Okay. Then, okay, then we go to the next learning objective. In the 10.2c, state the advantages of electron microscope compared to the optical microscope. So, electron microscope ialah yang kita belajar tadi. Dan optical microscope ialah microscope biasa yang kita gunakan dalam lab. Okay. So, the first one, the advantages of electron microscope. Okay, the first one, dia punya resolving power of electron microscope is much higher than the optical microscope. Okay, the resolving power is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So, kita tahu from the equation, lambda equals to H over Z to MEV equals to H over MV. So, dia kata, resolving power is inversely proportional to wavelength. Maksudnya, the smaller the wavelength means greater resolving power or the ability of the maksudnya kita punya lambda semakin kecil lambda maksudnya semakin rapat kita punya diffraction pattern semakin jelaslah kita punya resolving power okay so the first one kita boleh kata advantage dia ialah resolving power electron microscope is higher than the optical microscope okay the second one this is because electron can be accelerated to a very high kinetic energy giving them a very short wavelength. Kan kita gunakan kita punya uh, voltage ialah 10 to the power of 5 volt. Dan kita punya lambda ialah 0.004 nanometer. So, lambda sangat rendah menyebabkan voltage sangat tinggi. Bila voltage sangat tinggi, electron accelerated a very high kinetic energy. Okay, which is, kalau kita tengok kat sini, 100 times shorter than the dose of visible light. So, kita punya lambda tu sangat rendah dan sangat rapat. So, image yang kita akan nampak ialah sangat clear. Okay. As a result, electron microscope are able to distinguish details about 100 times smaller. So, maksudnya dia boleh zoom 100 kali lagi kecil. Thus, electron microscope can distinguish clearer two points separated by a distance which of the order of nanometer. Maksudnya jarak antara dua point itu ni jarak dia nanometer. Which is sangat kecil. Nanometer ialah darab 10 to power of negative 9 meter. Okay. But compound microscope which is uh, microscope biasa. They only distinguish clearer two points separated only micrometer. So micrometer ialah from here to here. Darab 10 kuasa negative 6 meter. So the first point yang kamu boleh kata advantage of kita punya electron microscope. The first one dia kata resolving power is much higher than optical microscope. The second one you boleh kata able to distinguish details about 100 times smaller and the second one you boleh check up and the third one you boleh kata can produce 2D and 3D image. So ini antara advantages of electron microscope sebab dia accelerate very high voltage menyebabkan lambdanya sangat rendah bila lambda rendah akan mendapat image yang sangat jelas okey tetapi dia ada juga disadvantages so apakah disadvantage dia disadvantages dia 
Okay, the first one you boleh tulis dia large in scale. Maksudnya electron microscope ni sangat besar. The second one dia expensive which is mahal. And the third one it is very high maintenance. Okay, so ini antara advantages of electron microscope compared to the optical microscope. Right, so that's it for 10.2.